time I saw a beast, I was visiting Moira Jimenez, the wife of the governor of New Albuquerque. A beast, bioengineered assault tactician. By Galactic Federation law, subhuman. By my laws, not human at all. I had kicked up a lot of dust on the walk from the mag rail station. Not all the glances people threw my way were friendly, and I knew I looked like an off-world thug in my hunting kit, two rifles slung over my shoulder. I hadn't washed, and I had no words for anyone. Pain and exhaustion, my face said. Killer, their faces answered. In Moira's apartment, I ate and drank what she set in front of me. She remembered something of tact, thank God, and did not interrupt until I had finished scraping my plate clean. Draped in a lavender galabea that skimmed her slim form from collarbone to ankle, she lounged in a low chair, ignoring the dust sif sifting from my clothes to the floor. I felt as silent as that dust. I needed a full night's sleep, some painkillers for my legs, and a hot shower with real water pressure, not a trickle from a sun-warmed bath. For a while I sat, belly full, content to enjoy the view from the window overlooking the big tawny. The turbines map marched in staggered rows across the horizon, white as salt. The 40-meter blades spun in their endless round. High over the flat, a few glider soared, dipping their wings to each other playfully. In the sunshine, the bamboo silk frame lay saffron, magenta, <coughs> chartreuse against the clouds mounting the northern horizon. Moira took my place and slid it under hers. That homey little movement caught my eye, and I saw her own breakfast remain untouched. People with Moira's enhancements didn't eat much. The demands of life and space had inspired a lot of low-level genetic manipulation designed to increase the physiological response to macro and micronutrients. Less calories, better nutrition, and a lot of people who look sleepy and elegant in or out of clothes. For a society whose food source was limited, such enhancement made sense. Unenhanced, I myself was neither racy nor elegant. I ate like a hostage and paid for it. Moira smiled at me when I reached for another piece of flatbread. Love to see you eat, especially when you've just come in from a hunt. I eat for those of you who won't, I said, and stuck up my tongue. She reached across the table to take my hand, finger pads stroking my calluses. I've got something to show you. <clears throat> you have to see this. I withdrew my hand. With Moira, this could be very good or very bad. <laughs> Give me a hint. I hate surprises. So stuffy boshy. She pouted at me a little, her green eyes glimmering, anything but chasing. Are you going to be stuffy like that at my party? Or do you have a good story for us? Another goddamn party. I made a non-committal noise and ran my hand over my braids, massaging the scalp beneath. You didn't schedule anything for tonight, did you? How cruel do you think I am? You've been two weeks out there. I know you need time to finish your, she flapped a hand, your notes or whatever it is you do for science. And you need to reboot into a proper citizen again. <laughs> she bestowed her familiar smile warm with the heat of the mischief, only not too completely proper, all right? I do have a story for you. Blood, guts, a narrow escape. You and Numair will like it. Oh, bless your heart. You have been away a while. Numair's upside at Lazar at five. Another debate on the decade proviso. The campaign for the vote is heating up. The decade proviso prevented mass immigration by promising a scheduled vote, whether to allow an increase in immigrants to Ubastis, or to keep it at what the party for the people called massive insult, disguised as meager charity. Every ten years the vote came up. Every ten years the scientists who had been sent to Ubastis to study the planet worried themselves sick. <coughs> the other people who came to Ubastis 
came to convince us to relax the quota on immigrants, to not worry about any drain on resources, any damage caused by development. It was not a topic I cared to discuss. If your husband's not there, you're just going to make trouble. I ducked her soft blow. Guess I'll come anyway. Good. Now come on, let me show you. Against my protest, she pulled me to my feet. Even in the hall outside of her apartment, she kept my hand in hers, but had to match her pace to mine, limping just as I did. Her grin was hectic as she drew me along. You'll never guess. She wanted me to. Filling the beans was a hobby of hers. You had a zygote shipped in, and you're going to get pregnant? No. You're going to serve laboratory meat to your guests? No. How silly of me. She'd done that last year. Didn't I remember? <laughs> <laughs> the soles of her sandals smacked the tooth of floor. My bare feet were silent. She stopped outside the quadrant med bay, the expression on her face one of uneasy defiance like a child. Are you ready for this? She asked, her hand poised above the pad. What have you done, Moira? I've acquired a beast. I froze. That's not even possible. For a moment, all the edges of my vision shimmered. Moira, that's a horrible joke. Yet I saw by her face, the defiance gone obdurate, that this was no joke. You mean that we've got one of those things here? He's a human being, Vashti, just like the other citizens. Like the other citizens? Thoughtless in my dismay, I reached around for the pad and swore when it shocked me. The other citizens rape and murder anyone recently? The door slid aside to reveal the med bay, all gleaming surfaces as sterile and efficient an environment as one could wish. It made me twitch. When we entered, the dark lightened to a pleasant dimness, not bright enough for actual work, but sufficient for casual examination. I did not want to examine the beast casually. He skipped upside quarantine at the Lazarus, didn't he? I said. She nodded, her frown gone, as she gazed down at her new trinket, her eyes shining with both the pause aquamarine glow and the pride of possession. I should go. I should switch off all med systems right now and go and find a member of patrol and rescue. Let Moira's trinket suffocate. Let the dead be dead. From all I knew, his existence should not even be possible. Not after the disaster at Mustang Prison, what, two, three years ago? I took a deep breath. I looked and saw the monster of my imagining. In that moment, the hatred and horror that I had tried to bury over a span of years collapsed in on itself, leaving a core of immeasurable density, immeasurable void. The male in the horizontal pod was completely naked, suspended in vector gel. Upright, he would stand roughly two meters. Spectacular muscle mass spoke of precise endocrinology resulting from genetics and chemical modification. Whoever had prepped him had a good grasp of the rigidity of Augusta's quarantine regulations. He was entirely hairless except for a faint stubble darkening his skull. He was catheterized and his vision blanked out by a light reduction mass. Still intubated from the journey, he now breathed the air of Vastus instead of the recycled oxygen from the ship. The vector gel served as a nano platform to infiltrate RNA deep into the layers of skin so they could start modifying a human's reaction to Vastus. Would this construct already genetically enhanced system inhibit the process? I suppressed a twinge of curiosity and brought my focus down. Why? Why was he here? Had Moyer been at all the scholarly sort, I might have suspected a stab at a research coup. I tried to joke. Let me guess, you'll keep him in light quarantine and display him at your party? I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with him, to tell the truth. 
I closed the deal for the explosion, and I forgot they were sending it to me. Forgot? How could you forget? You've studied the adoption strictures, haven't you? Moira tapped the plastic. Isn't he something? I got an invoice with him. They listed all his enhancements. Retinal for night vision. Old factory implants up to 20K per centimeter. He's also from the 315 clutch. She mistook my expression for ignorance. The 315 clutch. The first human to break the 320 mile. You can't keep him as a pet. There's more involved than a little quarantine on the shady side. Did I see him flinch when she tapped? I leaned in for a closer look. Beast engineers, it would seem, were not concerned with facial beauty. At this level of inspection, any purported enhancements were invisible. To me, his presence was unbelievable enough. I glanced at Moira and knew then that she'd never filled out any necessary applications, never been interviewed for her suitability for adoption. How did you get him? She shrugged, and I mouthed the answer as she said it, knowing full well what it would be. Connections. Mm -hmm. Did you get him from the same people as you got the cheetah? She pulled a face, avoiding my eyes. No, not them. The cheetah gangly with a spine like a titanium spring and a hard little head that fitted exactly under my chin. I had named her Moon Taz and took her into my apartment when Moira tired of her. I waited, watching Moira. She looked down at the beast, her palm flat against the pod, drinking in the sight of him. I wonder how long the castration wears off. You think it would respond to a shot of blue blue? A beast turgid with the blue was the last thing we needed around here. I shot her a daggered look. Fine. There was a warden at Mustaine I'd been corresponding with a few years ago. He let it drop that a termination was scheduled. I was so horrified that I told him to ship it here. I told him I didn't mind taking some precautions. She shrugged. Looks like he might be the only beast left alive in the universe some precautions. I backed away, rubbing my hands on my pants, even though I'd not touched anything. What did he do? Did you ask that, along with what doll parts he came with? No court had handed down the death penalty since before my grandparents' time. Not on Boston, not on Theta, not on any one of the stations the 50 years difference between here and Earth. It's got a first implant at the base of the skull. She nodded toward one of the counters for a black disc half the size of my palm length. One wrong move, I pressed the button, and he collapsed it. Complete synapse disruption. You going to give everyone in New Albuquerque one of those? Does my daughter get one? If it worked so well, why didn't Mustaine slap one in him and keep him there? I turned and limped out of the lab. I heard Moira's shod feet behind me. Her hand brushed my arm. I stopped to look at her, feeling the adrenaline whacking through me, sick to my stomach from it. She reached out to stroke my cheek. I ducked away. Vashti, I wanted you to be here, to help with him. You're the only person I know who'd be useful in what I'm training him. Training him? What the hell for? I thought room toss was too much, but this, this, that animal made you famous. Infamous. Damned if I would talk about Moon Talk. Moira, have you forgotten Wajet Valley already? That thing sure as hell didn't come in on our crew freighter, did it? You think I have the bank to pull something like that in through black space? I don't know what to think. You're getting emotional, sweetie. Do you need a pill? A patch? I hauled everything in. Be damned if I was going to take a pill. No, I said tightly. I need B. What for? Guiding me away from the lab. Her voice soft, solicitous. I thought you'd seen her this morning before you came in. Oh, when you haven't faked yet, have you? Came in straight from the bush. No wonder you're a little touchy. Touchy? That's a killer, not a play toy. Has Numair not launched some campaign I don't know about? 
Black ops against the prophet here? I hobbled down the hall. Let her follow me or not. Anyone not living on a rock had seen the downs from the Kashmiri offensive, Idaho Fort, the colonists smeared in the bungle that was Salaam. Beast units outmarched, outsmarted, outshocked, outslaughtered their natch and enhanced opponents in traditions that would reduce a robot to allied jackstraws. They had no place outside their artificial niche. Some had called the accident and subsequent explosion of Mustang prison a tragedy. When the news of it reached the source, I felt relief. A little compassion, certainly, for whatever actual humans had been on Mustang, whether prisoners or wardens. But the thought of thousands of genetically engineered soldiers perishing, it was the touch of salve on my heart. I myself had suffered what a beast was capable of. If it fell to me to kill the last one, I felt ready to shoulder that burden. Yeah.